Good afternoon. My name is Tom Kegelman. I'm Managing Director of Marketing at eCity Interactive. And today I'm joined with uh, by Tom Durso uh, here at CupRap. So Tom, it's a pleasure. Thanks for this interview session. Thanks, Tom. It's great to be here. I am the Director of Marketing and Communications in the College of Arts and Sciences at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Love how you're in brand today, too. I loved that a few years ago we went to the Wear Your School Spirit on Friday because after a long night Thursday, I really don't want to put a tie on. You don't have to sell me on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Tom, um, two days of cup wrap. It's been terrific. You know, maybe for the viewers who weren't able to attend, you know, maybe you can give them a, a perspective on you know, what it was like, some of the, the key takeaways that you learned here. I think the biggest takeaway was just the reinforcement of what we've finally started to talk about for, for a few years, which is that we have to be laser focused on the student experience. Um, it is not about what we want to tell them. It is about what they want to know. And we have to deliver that. We have to do it better. We have to do it more focused. And we have to do it more often. We heard it from Jeff Salengo. We heard it from just about every session that I've been in. I mean, it's, we, are, we are finally understanding that that's what we have to be doing better as marketers. Without a doubt. Yeah, the student experience is instrumental, right? Uh, I mean, we as marketers know that we spend so much time and energy getting the students in, but if we're losing them due to, to a faulty experience, then you know, all is for naught, essentially. So as a, as a marketer, like, and my, many of the marketers sitting at home right now or in their offices are probably thinking, well, what can we do in order to try to facilitate a better student experience? So you know, how do you think that they can go about it? I think you have to do a lot of research on the front end. I think you have to talk to your students, talk to your prospective students, talk to parents. And, I mean, engage partners to do it if you have to. There are some relatively inexpensive ways to do it, but find out what's on their mind. Um, because if you can't speak to that, they'll find someone who can. I would say this is a generation, but it's all of us. We are now used to curating our own content. We, we stream our television shows and movies. We find news from podcasts. We follow Instagram feeds and Twitter feeds. We're not getting the, the messages from on high anymore. We're finding the stuff that we want, and the rest can just go away. So if we're not delivering the stuff that our audiences want, that our prospective students want, they're going to find it somewhere else. It's a good message. It's incumbent on us as marketers then to try to solve this problem. I think so. I mean, we're the ones that have to bring that to our leaders. And we have to, f the hard thing is, is getting the leaders to listen to it. Higher education, which I love dearly, and I've spent most of my career in it, but one of its sticking points is how hard it is to make substantive change. Um, it's, it's, a very, it's very much of a, a legacy sector or a legacy industry, if you will. Um, it really, we tend to fall back on the things that we've always done, and I, we just can't anymore. And we have to, we have to, I hope our boards are smart enough to find senior leaders that understand that and are willing to challenge some of the old assumptions mm -hmm. and and do things differently. I, I do not think that we can continue or, or we'll go to the way of, of news media, which has been completely reimagined in part because it couldn't adapt to the new landscape. Right. Right. No, it's great. No, you're absolutely right. If, uh, if the industry can't learn and if administrators don't see the value in trying to enhance the student experience, then the market will force the step of that. And understanding what the student experience is and what they want it to be and need it to be. No, it's great. Um, and, you know, one of the other things I learned, and this was, Selenga brought it up again, you know, yesterday, was our prospective student audience is a lot more segmented than we think it is. It is not just an 18 to 22 year old and everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's all across the board, especially now with what people are looking for in their careers. Yeah. Micro credits and stackable certificates yeah. and certifications and all of that. And yeah. it's a great opportunity for us if we can take it. No, without a doubt. So uh, speaking of opportunity, we're coming out of the pandemic, hopefully. And, and so as we do that, you know, what are some of the things that you're hoping that maybe you can just do differently that you haven't been able to do over the past couple of years? Is there anything in particular that, that you think that now is the time that you want to start to reinvigorate things that you've had in motion in the past that you know, haven't been available to? I think for people who do what we do, 
being face to face for at least part of it is vital. I've missed that. I've missed it as a, as a team builder. Um, I've missed it as a, co a colleague. I love poking my head into somebody's office to ask a question. Like we had stuff fall through the cracks because we just didn't have mechanisms in place the way we do when we're at the office. Yeah. You know, the, the online tools are great, but they can't replicate face to face. And for those of us who are engaged in storytelling, which is all of us, I really think being in the room, talking with people, bumping into them in the calf, having coffee with them, that's where that stuff starts to happen. Yeah. That's where you build relationships, that's where you build trust. And all of that down the road is what leads to greater storytelling. Yeah. Uh, we heard it in the last session that we were in with Vault. We tell stories better when we tell them in teams. I think storytelling, we think of it as this solitary thing. I'm going to talk to somebody and then I'm going to go to my office and write it up. Yeah. But the best storytelling, as he showed us, yeah. it involves a lot of people. Yeah, and storytelling is more interesting in person than it is online. So I think so. I, I would agree, too. Um, <laughs> no, that's great. So uh, for our viewing audience, anything else that you'd like to impart? Any, uh, any tips or... I'd be remiss if I didn't say you should come to CopRap next year. <laughs> um, we are an organization that is member-driven, member-supported, member-programmed, and we offer a fantastic professional development value for, your, for the dollar. No, I can um, attest. And the, the, the people here, from, from the presenters to the attendees to our, our vendor partners, are among the best people in this industry. And I, I truly believe that. I can attest. Having been here three times now, it's definitely an event worth coming to. Uh, highly recommended. So from uh, my Joe Buck to my Aikman, uh, we thank you. And thank you, Tom, for participating in this today. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing everybody next year. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Thanks, Tom. Tom. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right.